The House will come to order. <clears throat> calendar for the day. The first bill on the calendar for today is Senate File 1478. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> Senate file number 1478, number two on the calendar for the day, an act relating to corrections. The member from Carver, Representative Nash, to explain your bill. Mr. Speaker and members, this is a very straightforward bill. It is a repealer bill. It repeals the Minnesota State Compact now that all 40 states after the state of Georgia signed the new interstate compact. We no longer need it. It's a repealer bill, and I appreciate your vote. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Uh, third reading, Senate file number 1478. Third reading. Discussion on Senate file 1478. Seeing no discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. The clerk will close the roll. There being 127 ayes and two nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. <laughs> the next bill on the calendar for today is Senate File 857. The clerk will report the bill. Senate File Number 857, Number 3 on the calendar for the day, an act relating to public safety. I recognize the bill author, the member from Hennepin, Representative Joachim, to explain your bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have before us Senate File 857. It has the identical language to House File 805 that when it left um, public safety and crime prevention in the House, except for a little definition of one of the stakeholders. Um, what this bill does is it creates a working group for a silver alert. Um, I started working with the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension back in January. We have two alert systems in the state. One is an Amber Alert for kids under 18 when they go missing, and one is a Crime Action Network for those over 18 or who may not qualify under 18 for the Amber Alert criteria. And I chose to do a working group after meeting with the BCA because I think there's a hole in our system that needs to be filled. We have a lot of seniors in our communities that are aging in place that um, have either Alzheimer's, dementia, or traumatic mm -hmm. brain injury that have a tendency to wander <laughs> or go missing. And this is bringing the BCA together with all the stakeholders to see if we need one. I didn't want to spend money on something if we didn't need it. So they're used to um, creating criteria, and this working group will meet starting on August 15th this year to put together criteria for a uh, silver alert, um, see how much it may cost, and see how it will be administered. And they're supposed to report back to the legislature January 15th of next year. I would like to thank my bi bipartisan <coughs> group of co-authors, and I will stand for questions. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. <clears throat> third reading, Senate file number 857. Third reading. Discussion on Senate file 857. Seeing no discussion, the clerk will give the bill its third reading. Excuse me, the clerk will take the roll on the bill.
The clerk will close the roll. Who is it? Who is it? There being 129 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for today is House File 1947. The clerk will report the bill. House File number 1947, number four on the calendar for the day, an act relating to telecommunications. I recognize the member from Dakota, the bill author, Representative Atkins, to explain your bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, this is an update to last year's kill switch bill. You'll recall the kill switch bill. Uh, there was a spate of uh, smartphone thefts and assaults that occurred last year. We passed the kill switch bill here in Minnesota, saw a 40% drop in the number of smartphone thefts uh, in the following year. Uh, this, though, does a little bit of a fix to that. Uh, when we passed the bill, there was a company called EcoATM that has some kiosk devices that pay cash for cell phones. Uh, they do it in a secure fashion. We didn't take that into account when we passed the bill. And since passage of the bill, they haven't been able to operate in the way that they had previously been operating. This still allows for a secure transaction. It allows for cash to be paid for that phone. Uh, but uh, you've got to provide your thumbprint, have your photo taken. That's provided to law enforcement. There is a warning, actually now the largest warning in the country that is provided to uh, folks that engage in this transaction to let them know ahead of time and give them the option of whether or not they want to proceed with the transaction, that this uh, uh, information that's being shared uh, with law enforcement so that they can acknowledge and know that before they proceed with the transaction. Uh, I want to thank the members of Civil Law, Public Safety, Commerce, and the Rules Committee for their bipartisan support, as well as uh, Chairman Hoppe for being the second author on the bill, uh, and I appreciate members' support. There is an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Atkins moves to amend House File number 1947, the second engrossment, and the amendment is coded A15-0694. The member from Dakota, Representative Atkins, to explain your amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This amendment just acknowledges uh, in statute what's already occurring. In addition to the requirements that are currently in the bill, it notes that uh, the person engaging this transaction for cash for their used uh, smart device uh, will have multiple high-resolution photographs taken of the seller, uh, and placement of the kiosk has to be approved by the municipality in which it is located. It's a pretty straightforward amendment. Uh, it's actually already occurring. Uh, and I'd appreciate members' support for the amendment. There is an amendment to the amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. <clears throat> Hoppy moves to amend the Atkins Amendment to House File Number 1947, the second engrossment, and the amendment to the amendment is coded A15-0721. The member from Carver, Representative Hoppy, to explain your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members, this is an amendment that doesn't, strictly speaking, deal with the kiosk that Representative Atkins is dealing with in the main amendment. This would deal with somebody that is bringing a cell phone or other goods into a pawnbroker, and it uh, slightly changes the terms of of uh, how the legal contract is or the relationship is there. And Mr. Speaker, I uh, was unaware when I accepted this amendment that Representative Anderson S. had this uh, bill earlier. So I feel a little bit like I'm stepping on her toes taking this issue. So if she wants, okay, apparently I'm not stepping on her toes, but if she wants to speak to it, I, I would more than welcome that. Uh, members with that, I would appreciate your support. Uh, Representative Atkins, thank you. And I would stand for questions. Any discussion to the amendment coded A15-0721? The member from Hennepin, Representative Hillstrom. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would Representative Hoppe yield for a question? He will yield. Representative Hillstrom. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Hoppe, have you spoken to Legal Aid or any of the other folks that care about uh, the property of folks who uh, maybe are poor and if they have any concern with the amendment? Representative Hoppe. Uh, Mr. Speaker and Representative Hillstrom, I have not, and that is my oversight. Um, I generally speak to Mr. Elwood or somebody from Legal Aid before anything like this. Uh, this was kind of a last minute deal. No one has talked to me. It was my understanding that it's not controversial, but no, I did not go speak to Mr. Elwood. Any further discussion on the amendment to the amendment? Representative Anderson. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Hoppe. Happy for you to carry any piece of legislation that I have any time, so appreciate your support on this. And Representative Hillstrom, this has been uh, signed off by law enforcement. They are in approval of this amendment, so hopefully that helps you to some degree. Any further discussion on the amendment to the amendment? Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of adopting the Hoppe Amendment to the Amendment signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. We are now members back to the, the amendment coded A15-0694 as amended, the Atkins Amendment as amended. Discussion on that amended a, amendment as amended. The member from Carver, Representative Hoppe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Atkins, thank you. Uh, I appreciate it, uh, the, your work on this issue. I think it's a good <coughs> bill. I think it's a good amendment, and I urge members to vote green both on this amendment, and I won't get up and speak again, but please also vote green on the uh, uh, bill itself. Thank you. Any further discussion on the amendment as amended? Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of adoption of the amendment coded A15-0694 as amended signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. We are now on, back on House File 1947 as amended. Further discussion on the bill as amended. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take, oh, excuse me. Uh, there being no further amendments at the desk, the clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File Number 1947, as amended. Third reading. Getting ahead of myself, members. Discussion on the bill as amended. The member from Hennepin, Representative Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. This, this bill modifies a uh, bill that I had last year along with Senator Dietzik. <laughs> Um, it is, the bill that's, that we passed last year has helped cut up, down on the number of credit card, or excuse me, cell phone thefts, and this is just an unintended consequence. It's, it's fixing an unintended consequence that we had to that bill, and it's a good bill, so please vote green. Any further discussion on the bill as amended? Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. The clerk will close the roll. There being 121 ayes and 8 nays, the bill is passed as amended and its title agreed to. Report from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration. Pepin from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration pursuant to rules 1.21 and 3.33, designates the following bills to be placed on the calendar for the day for Thursday, May 14, 2015, and establishes a pre-filing requirement for amendments offered to the following bills. Senate file number 229, 1350, 1854, 1025, 634, 1587, and 86. House file number 1519 and Senate file numbers 1679 and 1280. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions at the House desk and online. If there's no objection, we'll take action on these motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. Murphy E. moves that Senate file number 542 be recalled from the Committee on Higher Education, Policy, and Finance and be re-referred to the Committee on Health and Human Services Finance. The member from Ramsey, Representative Murphy, to your motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. This is the Senate companion to my bill that's dealing with licensure, a, a licensure of a hospice uh, facility in the district I represent. It belongs in Health and Human Services Finance, and I'd ask for your support. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of the Murphy motion signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails. Announcements. 
Representative Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I was wondering if the majority of the leader would yield for a question. She will yield, Representative Thiessen. Thank you, um, and I apologize for this. When we were earlier having our questions going back and forth and you were talking about the gas tax, uh, I didn't realize um, my understanding now that the transportation and tax bills are apparently off the table. And so I'm curious to now what the holdup is uh, for, the, uh, for the budget negotiations. Representative Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Thiessen. I don't believe that, that those two things are off the table. Representative Thiessen. Thank you. Well, if she'd yield for another question. She will yield. Representative Thiessen. Thank you. So just based on our earlier conversation, I just want to get some clarity. If the only obstacle uh, is related to transportation, I assume that means the Republicans have given up on the fake spending that they have in their Health and Human Services bill. Is that correct? Representative Pepin. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker and Representative Thiessen. We haven't met since this morning, so nothing's really changed. Um, you know, apparently, the, the Senator Bach has said some things because he's said uh, essentially that he needs to have the gas tax for him to have a transportation plan, and I was a little surprised by that because we've all identified that as a, a key priority. And, uh, you know, really, as I said earlier, we, we've already taken a House position on the gas tax. There weren't any votes here. The bill has to originate here if there were to be a gas tax. And frankly, I don't know if you saw the MMB report that talked about the additional uh, revenue that were that came in, and I think it was about $260 million that came in in April. And the reason that we have additional revenue is because of the low gas tax prices it talked about. So, you know, really, I think it's unreasonable to go down the line of a gas tax, but uh, we'll continue to meet with Senator Bach and Governor Dayton on that issue. Representative Thiessen. Thank you. If, she'd yield for, if the majority leader would yield for another question. She will yield. Representative Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, so I, I guess my question again is, if the only obstacle to get a, getting a budget deal done is related to transportation, then if you could just clarify for the body and, and actually answer the question, I assume you've given up on the funding that isn't supported by any fiscal note uh, in the Health and Human Services Bill because, as I understood it, that actually was an obstacle. Uh, the fact that there was fake money in the, in the House budget, that was an obstacle to getting a deal done. And now I'm hearing you saying that that isn't an obstacle. So I just want to clarify that the House has conceded uh, on that position. The lady from Hennepin, Majority Leader Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Thiessen. Well, we have talked some about Health and Human Services. But in addition to the gas tax, I would say the other big obstacle is the fact that uh, Senator Bach and Governor Dayton haven't been willing to meet uh, Speaker Doubt and I. Uh, last night, we finished up about 7.35. We were supposed to come back at 9 o'clock to discuss uh, further negotiations. That was apparently canceled while we were at dinner. The night before, we were here to meet, and Senator Bach, on Sunday night, he was tired and he needed to go home about 7 o'clock. We were open to meet on Saturday, but Senator Bach said he had dinner or family plans for Mother's Day weekend. On Thursday, Senator Bach had to get up to the fishing opener, so we were only able to talk until 5.30. So in addition to the gas tax holdup, the other big problem is that, you know, last night, frankly, Senator Bach and Governor Dayton wanted to wait 17 hours before negotiating today. And frankly, with less than a week left in session, I find that unbelievable that, that uh, we weren't able to meet last night. The governor had earlier said we could meet till after midnight. That didn't happen. And then uh, Speaker Doubt said we'll be in our office. We'll meet in our office at 8 o'clock in Speaker Doubt's office. And uh, the governor and had said that he could be available. It didn't happen. And uh, the senator didn't show up. So apparently they can meet at 1. So we'll see how it goes. But... So far, when we've met, uh, it's been a, a lot of delay, and it's a, it's a line in the sand about the gas tax. The gentleman from Hennepin, Leader Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, if the majority leader would yield for another question. She will yield, Leader Thiessen. Thank you. Um, well, that's helpful to understand what those obstacles are. And one thing I didn't hear as an obstacle that you're saying uh, is this uh, proposal to eliminate Minnesota care. So if, if, if that's not an obstacle, I, which I think is a concern for the governor and the Senate, apparently the House has conceded 
uh, that they are not going to get rid of Minnesota Care and we're going to come up with a different solution uh, to, to resolve our, our health care HHS budget? The lady from Hennepin, Majority Leader Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Thiessen. No, that is not the case. We, can, we did meet with the commissioner. But I mean, I think one question that I could ask you is if your caucus is switch position because since transportation does seem to be a holdup and I know one of the things that we talked about when we went over the transportation bill is that the only plan that had been put forward by your caucus had been a, a gas tax and that of course didn't pan out that way so perhaps if if you could help us come up with a plan as you know our Republican plan put about seven billion into dedicated funding for roads and bridges. It's an innovative new plan. Chair Kelly did a great job working on it. And uh, you know, frankly, the only plan that we saw was more taxes for gas taxes, tab fees, and frankly, with a seven or with a two billion dollar surplus, uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to raise additional taxes, especially when we found out there's 360 million of additional revenue because of the low gas prices. So, um, so really, if we could get your caucus to to move on that, that would be helpful. And, uh, you know, as far as the Health and Human Services, we continue to discuss those issues and we met with the, condition, the uh, commissioner and we'll continue to work on it. The gentleman from Hennepin, Leader Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, I guess we now have another obstacle to uh, getting done, which is the fact that the Republicans are continuing to assist on uh, jeopardizing the health care of, um, of another 90,000 Minnesotans by un being unwilling to concede on the position related to Minnesota care. So we have a, at least three obstacles now that I've heard. What about uh, if, if the majority leader will yield? She will yield. Leader Thiessen. Thank you. I know that the governor uh, in particular is interested in, um, in education funding, making sure that we get uh, more than the uh, little over half a percent that the House put on the formula, perhaps getting to 2 percent on the formula, as well as doing some investment in early childhood and a number of other things. Um, and I'm wondering, so it sounds like if those are the only three obstacles to getting a deal done, the House Republicans have now agreed that we're going to actually fund education at a sufficient level in the targets that uh, will actually be able to fund 2 percent on the formula perhaps, as well as doing significant investments in early childhood education. Uh, if that's not an obstacle anymore, I assume you're conceding to the governor's position on that? The lady from Hennepin, Majority Leader Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Thiessen. Well, we haven't, uh, as you know, we haven't uh, announced any decisions we've made and we're continuing in negotiations. And I can't remember what the percentage was that was both in the governor's proposal and the Senate proposal. Maybe if you can refresh my memory on that. Do you yield? Do you answer? The Leader Thiessen has the floor. Leader Thiessen? I believe that the Senate and the governor were initially uh, at 1 percent on the formula and 1 percent on the formula. I think the governor is now proposing to go to 2 percent on the formula, which I think is what most Minnesota, as I've heard from my constituents, and I think as I, we've traveled around the state talking to superintendents and teachers and parents, um, that's actually what they're interested in doing uh, and would be a very good use of our money. I mean, if instead of being at a 15 to 1 tax cuts to investment and education ratio, you know, if we could get that down to maybe 7.5 to 1, uh, we may be making a little bit more progress, which I think we'd be able to afford that proposal with. Um, but uh, my understanding is they were at one and one, but now the governor at least would like to be at two percent. Announcements? Yeah, Mr. S Mr. Speaker. Uh, the lady from Hennepin, Majority Leader Pepper. I, I, just, I just wanted to respond. So the, just to be clear, so the Senate had proposed a one percent and one percent increase on the formula, and the governor had proposed a one percent and one percent increase on the formula, and now the Senate and the governor apparently want a two percent and two percent increase on the formula. And as you know, the governor spent all of his money, and he also wants to pay for four-year-old pre-K. So I think one of the things, the challenges they have is to explain how they would pay for that additional, uh, that additional money that they would do. But again, uh, Representative Thiessen, I just want to be clear that, that the problem is the gas tax. And, um, you know, if, if we're not going to move on the gas tax, then I don't know how we're going to solve the transportation problem that we've, all of the caucuses have agreed upon that we need to fix. The gentleman from Hennepin, Leader Thiessen. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader, that's a I guess a fair question. Maybe he could just pursue the House Republican strategy and make up money to pay for stuff, which is how you've been doing it all session, Representative Pepin. I do see that Representative Hamilton distributed something about the 5% rate increase uh, both this year and the next year. Um, 
if you're going to be losing the 300 million, well, probably not quite that much, but 250 million maybe in fake money that you put in the fraud and, and abuse, and you're not going to be able to get rid of Minnesota Care, and um, you're trying, to, it's interestingly, you're trying to do a 15% cut to DHS, essentially cutting the same people that need to do the enforcement to find all that fraud and abuse you think are out there. Uh, with all that, um, what's the plan to actually pay for the 5% and 5% increase? Uh, because appar you know, apparently you don't have, you're not going to even have money to do one year of a 5% increase uh, once all the fake money in your budget goes away. If the majority leader would yield to that question. She will yield. The lady from Hennepin, Majority Leader Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Peason. Well, I'd say that's a matter of priorities, and we have determined that the disability community is a priority, and we haven't seen that in the other budget, and we find that that, that to be important, and uh, it what didn't show up in their budget. So we will continue to, to negotiate and uh, move forward. And again, I hope you'll get a chance to, to meet with Senator Bach and Governor Dayton, I know you ran over there yesterday, and, and uh, share with them that we don't have enough votes for the gas taxes, which is what they really want. The gentleman from Hennepin, Leader Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, apparently it wasn't as big a priority as ca tax cuts for uh, the Mall of America and for Home Depot and for the owners of skyscrapers in Minneapolis because you actually didn't fund that in your budget while you did fund those tax cuts. Uh, so that, that is actually an interesting point as well. Um, well, Mr. Speaker, I hope that we... Uh, start to make some progress here on getting to budget targets. I hope that we do right by the people in Minnesota that we're able to come up with a budget that makes the kind of investments I think we all want, uh, all want in, um, in education, which uh, from my perspective is the top priority of the people of Minnesota, uh, where they want us to be seeing our, our investments. If Representative Lomer would yield for a question. She will yield. Leader Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Representative Lomer, um, I don't know how closely, it seems like you've been following the negotiations very closely based on your comments in the paper yesterday. Um, and I just want to know what your thoughts are, in, you know, as an assistant majority leader, uh, what your thoughts are in terms of the um, budget target, the overall budget target that the, uh, it doesn't sound like we've reached any yet, but the overall budget target that um, will be negotiated between, between the House and the Senate. I know you were very concerned four years ago that we didn't stick at $34 billion. Uh, you're already well over $40 billion in your budget right now, but have manipulated the spreadsheet to stay under $40 billion. Um, so I'm just wondering whether you're willing to go above $40 billion to reach an agreement uh, right now or not. The lady from Washington, Representative Lomer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Thiessen. I uh, would just say that my comments in the paper were about the unsustainability of the budget going from $34 billion to what you would like to see is 43 billion. That is, um, I don't know how we can keep that kind of sustainability. And I am just uh, part of this team over here and we are working on negotiations and I trust that we will um, be able to move forward soon. Thank you. The gentleman from Hennepin, Leader Thiessen. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Would Representative Tice yield for a question? She will yield, Leader Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Tice, I was just reading the St. Cloud Times today, um, and there was an article on the um, education bill. We just had an exchange with Representative Pepin uh, about, about that number, the fact that you know, the House came in at about a little over a half a percent increase in the formula and not much more money beyond that for anything else. And um, now the governor is looking at you know, hopefully about 2% on the formula plus significant investment uh, his early childhood proposal. Uh, that's, and so I, I did notice that your, um, your school district was uh, very surprised in this article that with a budget surplus of nearly $1.9 billion, um, they thought that we would certainly bump up the education formula to cover their rising costs, but apparently that was over-optimistic on their part. And so I'm wondering, do you think, do you agree with where your school district is on this, uh, or do you think we should try to stick with the with the house targets and not be able to put uh, sufficient money, uh, at least according to your school district, into education this year. The lady from Stearns, Representative Tice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Thiessen. I haven't talked to the school district this week, but I do know that everybody's concerned with um, making sure that we do a wise and respectful budget and that we don't absolutely stall everything because of the gas tax and, and 
because if we don't do a gas tax, we're not going to do anything else. I think they're more concerned about that than anything else. <laughs> the gentleman from Hennepin, Leader Thiessen. Okay. Um, you guys have your talking points down well today. Um, the, um, the fact of the matter is that the gas tax is, is off the table. Senator Bach took it off the table. We don't need to do a tax bill. We don't need to do a transportation bill. But we can do a tr an education bill. So I guess, Representative Tice, my question to you is, you know, St. Cloud is saying, you know, for a long time of period, we borrowed money in order to save the state from borrowing money. The feeling now is the time to have a regular budget. I don't think people are asking for anything extraordinary. And if we do the budget that was passed off the House floor, the St. Cloud School District is actually going to be facing teacher layoffs and cuts, uh, cuts to programs, larger class sizes. So setting aside, now that we have set those two other issues aside, don't you think we should actually do what the governor's proposing for education and at least do 2% on the formula and make the investments in, in pre-K uh, pre and early childhood? Doesn't that make all the sense in the world? The gas tax isn't an issue anymore, Representative Tice. Is the gentleman from Hennepin asking the lady from Stearns to yield? She will yield. Uh, the lady from Stearns, Representative Tice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Thiessen. As I said before, I have not talked directly to the, the folks at the school board this week. And so with that, I would say that there was, I would say there's a dialogue that has to happen. But again, I believe that they want for us to have a respectful and wise budget. And I would disagree with some of the things that the governor wants and some of the things that you're assuming that they want. I don't know that it's all on the table. So I believe that we need to put it in the hands of those that are doing the negotiations. And we hope that folks are interested more in doing that than getting some other things. The gentleman from Hennepin, Leader Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Tice will yield for another question. She will yield. The gentleman from Hennepin, Leader Thiessen. Thank you. On education, what are those things you disagree with what the governor wants? The lady from Stearns, Representative Tice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Representative Thiessen. I have not heard from them that they are exactly on board with the pre-K. I know that my school district has a lot of diversity, and I think what they're looking for is some opportunities to spend some money that will help them better with, what, with the difficulties that they face, and I don't believe that pre-K is their priority right now. John from Hennepin, Leader Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, but certainly more than the little over half a percent that you put on the formula, which is going to result, I'm, you know, after that article, frankly, I would have gotten on the phone to my school district right away uh, to understand their concerns. I see Representative Knobloch has left the floor now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, so we could have asked him about that article as well. But um, um, members, I guess the, the bottom line is I hope that we start making some, some progress here and we over on our side are certainly willing to roll up our sleeves and help uh, get this session completed in a way that's going to work for, for uh, you know, average Minnesota families because I think that's what we all want. Uh, and I know that we're not going to be able to accomplish that with a two billion plus dollar a tax cut largely that goes to permanent tax cuts to huge uh, corporations in this state. The way we can help middle class families is actually investing in education, making sure that we're freezing and holding down tuition, uh, and making sure that we're not throwing a hundred, uh, nearly 100,000 people or jeopardizing the health care of nearly 100,000 people in this state. Uh, and so, you know, with that, it seems like those are actually the obstacles to a budget that's going to work for Minnesota families. And if we can get to that, uh, a budget that doesn't do those things and makes the investments in education I think that we all want to make, I think we could be out of here very easily. So I hope that the negotiations move quickly today and move quickly in that direction. Announcements. The lady from Hennepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the bill went so fast, I didn't get a chance to thank the Alzheimer's Association and the, traumatic, the Minnesota Brain tra tra Trauma Injury Center for all their help. Um, Minnesota Brain Traumatic Injury Alliance, sorry. And I, I also want to thank all of you for your support. It was a, a labor of love for me. My grandmother died of Alzheimer's almost two years ago next week, and my parents are here on the floor with me today as well as my daughter. So thank you very much. Announcements. The lady from Dakota, Representative Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to point out that Mediterranean Cruise Cafe has uh, food in the retiring room for everyone and staff, and just help yourself. Thank you. Announcements. The gentleman from Scott, Representative Albright. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and members of the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, the Ways and Means uh, is tentatively uh, scheduling to meet at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. 
uh, location, please uh, check your uh, uh, email for further uh, instructions. But 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, we're going to be taking up two small bills. Thank you. Announcements. The lady from Hennepin, Majority Leader Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 10 a.m. Wednesday, May 13, 2015. Representative Pepin moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 10 a.m. Wednesday, May 13, 2015. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say nay. Yes. The motion prevails. Majority Leader Pepin. I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Pepin moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. The motion prevails and the House stands adjourned until 10 a.m. Wednesday, May 13th, 20 and 15. We are adjourned.